and welcome to our March live class, Living in Favor Every Day. I am your host, Diana Cole, and I am excited about being here, and I'm so excited about you joining us. This is Saturday, March 20th. Normally, our live classes are the last Saturday of each month. However, I'm excited to remind you that our Wisdom and You Ministries Women's Conference for Women's History Month is coming up on Saturday, March 27th. So a week from today, make sure you join us. Now, we're doing live class early because of that, and so we're glad that you were able to join us this day, March 20th. And guess what else I'm excited about? It is the first day of spring. Welcome, welcome spring. If you're like me, you're excited about the change of the season and what an exciting time to begin planning wonderful things that we'll do during our spring and summer. If you will join me in prayer. Dear gracious God, we come before you today giving you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. We exalt you, God. We worship you. We honor, love, and adore you. We praise your name, O oh God, for you are worthy of praise, glory, and honor. God, we also give honor to your Son, Jesus, our Savior and our Redeemer. And God, we also give honor to the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, our keeper, our reminder, our revealer, and our teacher. We give honor to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And God, on today, we just ask that as we share in this live class moment, that you will be with us, that you will anoint us to speak those things that you would have us speak unto your people. God, we pray that you will bless each and every one that is watching this, whether it be today or at some other time. Oh God, that you will inspire, encourage, and motivate them through the words that we share and through your word in Jesus name. Amen. And our scripture for today comes from an all familiar scripture that you all know. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Our theme throughout this whole month of March being that it's Women's History Month, is look how far we've come. And we've been sharing with women here and, and all over that have joined us for our different uh, Bible studies and, and times of sharing and even preparation for our event that we've made it this far as women by faith. Thus, the Hebrews 11, 1 scripture, because it's faith that has brought us this far, and it's faith that's going to take us further. So, during this time, I'd like to share with you uh, some women in history, both secular as well as Bible characters. For our secular women today, we're going to take a look at Jane Addams, who was born in 1860, passed away in 1935. She was a social activist founder of Hull House, charter member of the NAACP, Nobel Prize winner, and labor union organizer, Jane Addams. Margaret, better known as Molly Tobin Brown, born in 1867, passed away in 1932. She was the Titanic survivor and a woman who was determined to break the rules of high society. Again, Margaret Molly Tobin Brown. Rachel Carson, born in 1907, passed away in 1964. She was a marine biologist, science writer, and environmentalist. That's Rachel Carson. 
Dorothy Feldheim, born 1893, passed away in 1989. She was a Jewish American news journalist and television broadcaster, developed format for television news and programming. Dorothy Feldheim. Another person, Julia Boggs Dent Grant, born 1826, passed away in 1902. She was the wife of Ulysses S. Grant, 18th President of the United States. She was a determined woman who, despite family objections, married the man she loved. Outspoken, she also created her own plans for ending the Civil War and holding a secret presidential inauguration. Again, that's Julia Boggs Dent Grant. Then we have Adela Prentice Hughes, born 1869, passed away in 1950. She was the founder of the Cleveland Orchestra and Cleveland Music Settlement House. And finally, Mahalia Jackson, born 1912, passed away in 1972. I believe everybody knows who Mahalia was, but she was an extraordinary gospel singer and the first African-American woman to gain national acclaim for gospel music. So we celebrate those women of today, even though they may no longer be with us, their legacy still lives on. Now, I'd like to share a little bit about some women of the Bible. Certainly, uh, our lives have been impacted by several women from the Bible days. And I'm going to share a couple that you know pretty well. But I also want to share with you a few that we don't really hear that much about. I want to start with Abigail. Abigail was considered a woman of integrity, beautiful and wise woman who was married to Nabal, a harsh and evil man. This wise woman became wife to David after Nabal's drunkenness led to his own death. When David proposed marriage, she quickly went with five damsels to become his wife. That's Abigail. Priscilla. Priscilla was a, the wife of Aquila, and she was a worker in Christ and gifted by God in the ministry of the word and risked her life for the gospel. Her involvement with Paul must have helped her get rooted in the word. Priscilla. Anna. Anna was an elderly widow by the time Jesus was presented at the temple. She was called a prophet and became the first person to publicly proclaim that Jesus would be the redemption. Then there is Hagar. I know we've heard of her. Hagar was Sarah's slave girl. When Sarah found herself unable to have children, she arranged to make Hagar the concubine of Abraham to start a family through her. As a result, she shared the same promise of Ishmael's descendants. Then there is Leah. We've heard about Leah as well. Leah was the wife of Jacob, the firstborn daughter of Laban and the sister of Rachel. Leah is the mother of Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Ishkar, and Zebulun, the progenitors of six of Israel's 12 tribes. She is also the mother of Israel's only recorded daughter, Dinah. When Leah died, she was buried in the family tomb in Hebron, known today as the tomb of the patriarchs. Then there is Sapphira, the wife of Ananias. They were both members of the early Christian congregation in Jerusalem. Their deception and cunning brought about their deaths. Two of the members of this group were Ananias and his wife, Sapphira, who also had sold a field but the profits from the sale were kept in part by the couple and only a part was laid at the apostles' feet by Ananias. This hypocritical show fooled no one, especially not Peter, who was filled with the power of the Spirit. Peter knew instantly that Ananias was lying, not to him, but to God, and exposed his hypocrisy then and there. You know the story. 
Ananias fell down and died. When Sapphira showed up, she too lied to Peter and to God, saying that they had donated the entire proceeds of the sale of the land to the church. When her lie had been exposed, she fell down and died at Peter's feet. God was making a statement with Ananias and Sapphira that hypocrisy has no place in the church. God hates sin and will punish it, and that he is concerned for the purity of his church. Sapphira. Lastly, I'm going to share with you Miriam. Miriam was the prophetess and older sister of Moses and Aaron. Miriam was with Moses throughout the nine plagues. Miriam died and was buried in Kadesh before the Israelites entered the promised land. So again, just a few Bible characters to refresh your memory or even introduce to you some women of the Bible. Now, we certainly welcome men and women to join us for live class because it is for everyone. However, because it is Women's History Month, men, I know you don't mind that we're focusing on the women for this particular month. So I want to share with the women something that I hope you'll find inspirational. It is, um, the, the, the title of it is A Woman of Excellence. And what I did was I took the word excellence and I created an acronym out of that. And so each letter has a word and a meaning. So again, women of excellence. E, a woman of excellence is enthusiastic, cheerful, happy, and full of spirit, doing things wholeheartedly and eagerly with a positive attitude. X, extraordinary. A woman of excellence goes beyond what is usual or ordinary remarkable or exceptional. The letter C, a woman of excellence is confident. She has God confidence, trusting that through God, she has what it takes to handle whatever happens. She feels sure of God in her and not afraid to try new things or take risks. Letter E again, eager. She is eager, enthusiastic, she is excited and ready to make life happen. She understands living in favor every day. The letter L, a woman of excellence, is loyal, staying true to herself and then to others, standing for something she believes in without wavering because she trusts the God within her. Second L, she's loving treating people and things with care, treating herself and others with care. The love in her is contagious. She knows how to use things and love people. Letter E. She is educated. She expands. She strengthens and disciplines her mind. She learns more about things. She knows it's not just about book education but so much more as well. The letter N, a woman of excellence is nurturing. She protects, supports, and encourages even herself, giving love and attention to people. She treats people with, and things with respect, seeing herself and others through God's eyes. Letter C, she is courageous. She has bravery in the face of fear, it is not the absence of fear, but it is facing fear and moving through it. She does the right thing even when it is hard or scary. She admits mistakes but never gives up. In her courage, she recognizes that God has not given her the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And the final E, a woman of excellence is excited enthusiastic and stirred. She's stimulated, stirred to activity. She is passionate and has a purpose. She has a clear focus. She knows it starts with a vision for what she wants to accomplish. Then she focuses on her goals and do not allow anything 
or anyone to deter her. Are you a woman of excellence today? I'd like to end the class today talking about some wonderful things and opportunities that are there for women today. Again, our theme, look how far we've come. We as women have truly come a long, long way. And I always say that we've got a long way to go. And that's exciting because there's just so many opportunities and so many things that are happening for us. But God has blessed us to come this far. And with coming this far, he has certainly opened the door for opportunities that we didn't have way back then that we have now. And what I would like to focus on specifically thinking about how far we've come is women in pursuit of non-traditional careers. I want to say to all of you women out there, those of you who may just be going into college or may just be graduating or um, have been in the work world for a while, there are some really great, great opportunities with careers out there for you that I'm hoping that you are considering. I encourage people to look at it as a career, not just a job. The definition for a job is a paid position of regular employment. Boring. <laughs> but a career is an occupation undertaken for a significant period of a person's life and with opportunities for progress. And so you might ask the question, is a career the right thing for me? <laughs> I say yes. If you want more out of life than just regular paid employment and you desire to progress and grow as well as wanting to do something that you can be passionate about, passionate about, excuse me, then a career is what you want. Preparing for a career, let's let's talk about that a little bit. If you are working, do your best at all times. If you're already on a particular job, maybe you're not considering it a career, but it's a job, continue to do your best at all times. Take advantage, advantage excuse me, of time availability with interning, externing, and volunteering because those particular things could lead to a hiring opportunity. So in other words, if you're in college still at this point, but you're nearing the end of your time, and they put you in what's called an interning or externing position, or even having the opportunity to volunteer on a, at a particular career, uh, make sure you do that because it could lead to you getting a job out of that volunteering situation that you did. I also want to encourage you that this gives great opportunity for experiences. And I know you're saying she sure is using that word opportunity a lot, but it's because opportunity is something that's really great. So your volunteering gives you good experience. And when you have a good experience with uh, externing or interning or volunteering, when you really do have a job interview, then sharing those experiences will be great at that time. I also want to encourage you to keep a log of your various accomplishments. We so often as women do not do that. Uh, we don't think about even the things that we've done at home. If we were at home for a while, uh, being mom, being wife, or whatever, keep a log of the things that you've accomplished even in that career at that particular time because those things will count for you at a job interview. Might be things like you've received a certificate of some, of some type, you've uh, done several volunteer hours, uh, you gain skills from those volunteer experiences. So make sure you're keeping a log. And build relationships and make a good and lasting impression. Challenge yourself. You don't have to compete with anybody else. Compete with yourself. Challenge yourself. Set higher goals. Decide that you'll go above and beyond. Don't ever just get satisfied with where you are. I encourage you also to set professional goals. You know, prep, begin prepping for interviews, contacts, and even your volunteerism. Remember, 
what you did yesterday, today, and what you do for today will also affect your tomorrow. So again, you may have a question in your mind, so where do I start and search for a career? One of the things I encourage you to do, particularly if you are on a, a college campus, I know some of them are operating right now and some are not, but you can even do this online. Find a career assessment and take that. That's a really good uh, way to kind of get an idea of, of what you're interested in. Talk with educational and career counselors. That's part of that going an extra mile. Call the people who are experts in those areas that you're looking for, people that have gone through what you're, you're striving to go through and get some good advice from them. And lastly, begin to take note of the things that you get excited about or passionate about. What are the things that make you naturally jump up out of your bed and get going in the morning? So, what is a non-traditional career growing popular concept? Non-traditional means a job or a career, and it is where the majority of the people holding the position are the opposite sex. So, normally, I'll use men even as an example. For many years, women have been considered the nurses. But you find now, since several years ago, and even now into this 21st century, that more men are going into nursing. So coming back to women, non-traditional jobs actually span multiple job classifications. The most common ones, which I'm going to share with you today, are skilled trades such as plumbing, electrical engineers, mechanical jobs construction of machine parts made out of metal, technical careers equal administrative computer operators, programmers, service careers, housekeeping to psychotherapy, professionals and public service sectors such as accountants, architects, funeral directors, public relations, and the list goes on. These career categories that we are all familiar with are Things that usually have been done by men. However, as we go back to the non-traditional career definition, we see the changes in who's doing what nowadays. Women are entering into non-traditional jobs such as police officers, doctors, funeral directors, carpenters, electricians, and beyond. So I hope I've given you some idea of some of those non-traditional jobs that women really are getting into. And here's the key thing, folks, is that in these non-traditional jobs, women are making more money than they've ever made before. So again, another question you might have, where do I look for non-traditional careers? Well, we know since the pandemic, some things have really changed, but we're beginning to see a turnaround. We're beginning to see some changes and, and pretty soon we'll be pretty much full-fledged back into those things that we're used to doing. And so one of the places that you could go for a non-traditional career job opportunity is career fair. There are career fairs that take place and it's a wonderful uh, time to go and check out what's out there. You can also find this information on internet job boards. You can go to employment agencies. You can now do direct application on company websites. Family and friends is a great way to find out that word of mouth. It's always worked and it always will. So Take some time as you're thinking about your life, living in favor every day, women, and you're thinking about moving forward, you're thinking about growing, you're thinking about making some change. You know, when the, the virus hit us, it, it really made us come to a, a dead end stop. But now we're, we're able to get going again. And so this might be the perfect time for you to start thinking about a career change and making something happen for yourself that you really want to have happen. Another question you may have as we're finishing out is, how will I know this non-traditional career is right for me? Well, here's a few things that you can consider. Does it fit your goals? Do you see the opportunity to grow in it? A means to an end? 
Will it satisfy your income requirements and the other part of your life aspirations? Will it benefit your family and others concerned? And finally, measure. Where is your passion and excitement level? Does it meet those goals? So as I close out with you on today, this wonderful, wonderful month of Women's History Month, I want to share with you tips for making it in what has been considered a man's world of business and beyond. Number one, always be open. Number two, do your homework, your research. Number three, be flexible and plan ahead. Number four, find some mentors, some role models. Find people that are in the, the, the career that you want to be in that, have, that has done it for years and, and ask them if you can use them as a mentor, as a role model, so that you can find out more about what you may not know through them. Five, gain as much support from family and friends as possible. Number six, expect isolation as a natural part of the process. So in other words, there may be some people that are not excited about you moving into what is considered a non-traditional job or career, but that's okay. Number seven, consider every experience as an opportunity to learn. And finally, the biggest one of all, never ever give up. So I hope we've inspired you a little bit to think about your career and where you're at, no matter what your age range is at this point. Think about, do you want to do something different? Maybe you want to be even an entrepreneur and start your own business. But whatever you do, I want you to keep in mind, look how far we've come and we've got so much yet to do. I hope you've enjoyed our Women's History Month, <laughs> Living in Favor Every Day experience. I hope that you have enjoyed learning more about yourself, uh, considering some things about yourself, and most of all, I hope you have enjoyed celebrating women. We look forward to you joining us again on next month, April 24th, for Living in Favor Every Day. Again, I'm your host, Diana Cole. Blessings and peace.